Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's the Bears going up against the Packers. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. We're at the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL as you get a look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with the Chicago Bears. And we say hi again, everybody. Brandon Gordon here as we count down to kickoff. I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, Larry pointed out in the open, we've got a pretty good matchup of wide receivers here this afternoon, don't we? And those guys have such a big impact on the game nowadays. We know it's a throwing game, but the guys who can go up and get it, the guys who can break tackles after the catch and make bigger plays, oh yeah, they love spotlight as well. They want the football, they want the attention. Fielded about a yard deep. Gets around him. And now running right through him. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Chicago Bears offense taking the field. There's Mike Glennon, 5-13 and 13 as a starter in his three years with the Bucs, and now 0-2 as a starter with the Chicago Bears. And that's tough on him, too, because I thought he played well against Atlanta in the opener. In fact, he threw a couple balls near the end zone on the last drive that if they'd been caught and should have been caught, would have won the game for the Bears. Now, Tampa was a different story. A lot of pressure on him in that game, and I think the head coach, John Fox, gave him that dreaded vote of confidence after the game that he would still be the starter. I hear the drum beats for Mitchell Trubisky starting right now. <laughs> yeah, those are words as a quarterback you don't always want to hear. <laughs> Our first carry now for Jordan Howard. And he's not going anywhere to start tonight. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And let's take a look at the Bears offense. As I was preparing for this game and reflecting back on last season, I was pleasantly surprised to see the numbers that Chicago posted on offense in 2016. Number 17 in rushing, number 14 in passing, number 15 in total offense. And they did all that with unsettled quarterback play. They expect to get a jump in this area and continue to feed the ball to Jordan Howard for an exceptional rookie year as a runner. Glennon. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Green Bay's defense in 2016 was a bit unbalanced. Number eight against the run, but number 31 against the pass. So you know the offseason emphasis is on trying to make sure they shored up the secondary and increase the pass rush. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Now Glennon, he's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete, and he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and cause a nice play for lost yardage. Here's Pat O'Donnell to punt in his fourth year from Miami. Trevor Davis deep for Green Bay. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. Green Bay taking the field. And there's the newest member of the 300 touchdown club, Aaron Rodgers. And he was the fastest to it. Took him 564 attempts fewer than Peyton Manning, who was the previous record holder. Well, he's traveling in big company, isn't he? 
But think about the plays that you remember about Aaron Rodgers, the signature plays, the deep strikes downfield, him extending plays and finding people, the Hail Marys. How did he get that number 300 touchdown pass? A one-yard shuffle pass, a shovel pass there to Ty Montgomery. How about that? Unfortunately for Green Bay, it was in a loss to Atlanta. The first carry here for Ty Montgomery. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. This Green Bay offense, as we get a look at the starters, they've had their injury issues so far this year in Atlanta. But they had Rail Cobb, Jordy Nelson both lead that game. Then they've had injuries on the offensive line. You're talking about their bookend offensive tackles. David Bakhtiari at left tackle, Brian Bulaga at right tackle. They didn't play at all against Atlanta. I think we count on the magic of Aaron Rodgers to erase everything. Sometimes it gets to be just a bit too much. Even Aaron Rodgers can't overcome it all. On second down, here's Rodgers. Caught on the right side by Adams. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Rodgers finding Adams for a Packer first. I know Devontae Adams really developed in 2016 as a receiver for Green Bay. I think he had plenty of incentive because when Aaron Rodgers breaks contain, gets out of the pocket, anything can happen downfield. You can find yourself open, can't you? And it makes Adams a high-volume guy. Week 7 and 8 last year, 25 catches. Highest two-game total in the illustrious history of the Packers. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Rodgers. The left side throw complete to Adams. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So here we go, first and ten now. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he's brought down. Eleven more on that one and another first down. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year. But it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but... Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. The Chicago Bears defense in 2016 was right in the middle of the pack overall, ranking number 15 in total defense. But what hurts their pride? Number 27 against the run. And in the Windy City, where toughness is at a premium, that's not going to stand for very long. They want to get back to their old ways and shut that down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it's going to be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Into the red zone, it's Rodgers. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be second and about a yard. I have no crystal ball up here. I can't truly see into the future. 
But if they don't start getting some pressure on him, make him move around a little bit and do something with the receivers to, you know, change up their timing, they're going to get shredded as we've seen so far. Right now, they're off to a blazing start. Yeah, and you are right. He looks way too comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah, there shouldn't be a pillow back there for him, all right? <laughs> if, as, as a defensive guy, they've got to dump him on his backside a few times, shake things up. Yeah, they're going to need an in-drive adjustment here on this first series. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. On every snap, the defense is trying to establish who they are. But on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are. And that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalposts. And the Packers are off to a 3-0 lead. And the first three points of the night belong to our home team as they get the field goal on the game's initial drive. A good, solid drive. It didn't wind up in the end zone, but that's okay. You've got something positive on the board, and you've got the early lead. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. The catch is made by Kendall Wright. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Speaking of the ball carrier, Howard, last week, just seven yards on nine carries. Might he hear the footsteps of Tariq Cohen behind him? No, Tariq Cohen has played awfully well coming out of the gate. I think he had 68 yards from scrimmage against Tampa Bay, and people love the exciting changeup that he is. But truth be told, there's room for both of them. Jordan Howard should be the primary ball carrier, the guy who totes it more than any other back in Chicago. And you use Tariq Cohen as that changeup, both in the run game and throwing it to him in open space. All right, here we go. Blue On first, they go right back to Howard. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. And ready now for second and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, how about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a carry for the change of pace back. The rookie, Tariq Cohen. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh -uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player is just one that they, they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? And he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. They try again with Cohen. And shedding through the tackle. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. A couple of plays sent them the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. They'll set up to throw. Glenn and hit. He loses the football. It's out. And this is going to be Packer football. Well, that's a down and distance coaches always talk about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long. And you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him. Sometimes even with extra pressure. And he... He knew that. I mean, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. But well, what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here in the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position after a turnover. I feel like I might have them a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy who's got the football in his hands. Meaning, if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. Rodgers handing to Montgomery. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Draw play, Rodgers to Montgomery. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that's going to lead to a third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. It's complete to the tight end, Bennett. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. A Packer first, Rodgers to his new target, Bennett. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. On second down, Montgomery. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And that one is incomplete. And it also concludes quarter number one. So we played one quarter here on a Monday night. It's the Packers on top early. We're back to Lambeau in just a moment. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. And the first play will be a field goal try. He made his first attempt, this from 45. Misses it off to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it, and this one winds up no good. Onto the field now come the Bears. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. Is quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. blown up losing yardage back at the 35 it's a loss of two now third down partner you mind if i take off this headset and put on a coaching headset you want to get this running game going i want to get this running game going i'm going down there and saying gentlemen we have got to run the football we've got to get it going right now yeah to this point in the second quarter it has been a struggle It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Let's go! Green, 39! He'll drop to throw. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line.
The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive, missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there, you've given yourself a chance, you're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt, and if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. This is taken around the 12. <laughs> Mike Glennon and the Bears, oh, heading back onto the field. It hasn't been his day. It hasn't been their day to this point, but... You know, some kudos to this crowd. This is not an easy environment to play in. And they have to be really excited because they feel like they're having an impact on the game. The visiting quarterback not playing very well. Their team not doing well. They're helping their home team out. Now, if you're that quarterback, though, you've got to find a way to hurt that crowd. And the only way to do that, make good plays and try and calm them down. I'm sure he's thinking it starts right here on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw incomplete. Marcus Wheaton was the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. to throw now on second and ten. And he's able to hit Joshua Bellamy, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They're going to look to throw. Got a man, it's right. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. to throw here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Zach Miller as tight in there. And it's second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And his throw here is incomplete. They tried to make something happen, but that one came up incomplete and really wasn't a good-looking throw. Yeah, maybe even go as far as to call that a little ill-advised. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's the right phrase for it. Definitely ill-advised. Just wonder about his mechanics right now, you know, and that's the tough part. You do so much stuff in practice to make it repetitive. But it has to repeat under pressure, whether it's pressure from the defense or just the pressure of playing the game. Packer pressure, and down he goes. 
These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. Taking it about the 16. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Jordy Nelson now trotting back out there on offense. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no targets, but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. I know how receivers think. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. First and ten, here's Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. hands to Montgomery and he is going to lose yardage here it's a loss of two there bringing up second down every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays they run like DBs and let's face it they know how to finish plays too eyes up head up run right through them to throw on second down. Caught left side, Bennett. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Have you gotten used to seeing Martellus Bennett number 80? <laughs> I mean, he's been number 88 his entire career, right? And how about that? The fans selecting his jersey number. Yeah, that was his idea. He put that out there on social media and said, here, here are a few choices. What should I wear? And he went with what the fans picked. Over 100,000 people weighed in. Rodgers going to throw. He's got Adams on the hookup. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield across the 45. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They go play action here on first down. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Rodgers now on first down. It gets it over the middle to Cobb. 
Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Base, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. They'll run with Montgomery. on the carry there a good run and now second and goal well it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play and now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone couldn't do it there it'll be interesting to see offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive where they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game They'll run for it with Montgomery. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. Ty Montgomery taking it in from a yard out. And the Packers add on to their lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. And he puts it through to extend this thing to a 10-2 ball game. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was all capped on the touchdown run by Ty Montgomery. on now to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Offense. 
So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards there for number 15. sideline nicely done but right at the line of scrimmage just a yard on the catch there it'll be second and nine can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there did you see how his toes got down tip tap tip tap got him down but what did he get out of it he sold the sizzle he just had no stake <laughs> i mean was it one yard yeah you suppose like that you at least expect the first down there just one yard and he'll push his way up to about the 44 here only a yard on the pickup, and now they've got a third down and eight. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long, and that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. The Bears on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Looking to throw. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Lambeau following these words. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And our focus now moves to Jordy Nelson. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches. So that's the surprising part. But they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us. But they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect him to stay silent for the rest of the game. Though. Yeah, yeah, you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but 
I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. So we've got a second and five. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. The Packers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Now on to kick it away. The rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Charles, you are the master of abstract facts. So who would you say is the best player ever drafted from Ashland University in Ohio? How about the only one ever drafted from there? Adam Shaheen, the tight end, went to the Chicago Bears, began his college career, though, as a basketball player, Division II in the state of Pennsylvania. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They'll look to throw, and Miller with it over the middle. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. And now they'll try the end round. And this one goes nowhere, losing yardage back at the 22. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Bears on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third down and 12. Glennon going to give this one to Cohen. And he's able to get up here to the 26. And now the Packers going to take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play.
Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the gun, it's Rodgers. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And that one will be no good. He never had it online. It's well wide to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Try and start this drive in the air. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. 
Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So second and ten here. to throw here. Miller on the catch over the middle. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This one from 48 yards away. And that'll be off the crossbar and out. It's short. He couldn't get it there. It's no good. So we're at halftime here at Lambeau with the Packers taking the lead to the break. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Packers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Bears won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. Here we go. Let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Now to late in the first half. Defense will win the battle and get the sack. This ends up as a loss of nine. Still late in the first half. It's Mike Glennon connecting with Zach Miller. And he'll be tackled at the 31-yard line. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at the three. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Rodgers now on first down. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage.
On second down, here's Rodgers. And a hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? A play fake to Montgomery. Now Rodgers. Blitz coming and down he goes. Danny Trevathan coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. On now is the Packers punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come out throwing here on first down. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it, and it took the ball off course. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield, maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. On the right side, this is Miller. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Bears on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. Here we go now. Green, 39. He'll drop to throw. And incomplete on the deep ball. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been terrific so far. Fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow the ball finds its way back to him. A tone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Play fake here on first down. Over the middle complete. That's Bennett. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Fresh set of downs here. Hey, 
Here's Rodgers. Caught left side by Cobb. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one goes for 36 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Rodgers. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Rodgers will try again on second down. Caught on the right side by Adams. And he's brought down. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. That is caught by Cobb, and it's a Packer touchdown. Randall Cobb, a 16-yard touchdown, and the Packers add six to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. And they're able to up the lead by one more. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. Crosby on now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. First down, they run with Howard. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage to be found. Two. 
Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. Lennon hands this one to Howard. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. When you think of Mike Daniels, you think of strength. Hard to knock off the football. But surprising quickness and ability to move and evade people. How about that play there? Well, he can squat 600 pounds, so that's how he caught people's attention coming into the league, and he caught our attention right there. The Bears on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This will be third and 19. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Got a man. It's right. And he's eventually brought down, but not before he reaches the 39, just shy of the 40. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. throw it got his man complete over the middle it's Miller five yards on the catch there brings up second down completion was given up but that's why you play zone defense so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch so they complete the pass and now they face a second down They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Now Aaron Rodgers and the offense heading back onto the field. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. And that's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield. He was standing in the pocket. 
but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. The Packers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. To throw, it's Rodgers. This is Montgomery with a grab over the middle. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and that's going to make it fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. The Packers defense, they ready themselves here. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt well, Maybe about you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six yard line. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. Five yards there, and remember Howard last year, 5.2 yards per rush, so right around his average. The only Bears running back that's averaged that many yards per carry in a single season, Walter Payton. And if Jordan Howard can keep up that type of pace, the city of Chicago will surely embrace him. Let's go! Boom, it. Boom. This is Howard on second down, and they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. They lost four there, and it's third down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. The Bears on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and nine. This is Cullen. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. Taken right around the 44. 48-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Packers will have a short field to work with here as they take over first and 10. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. Is it, how do they score here, especially a touchdown? It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Yeah, still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the drink, aren't they? They'll try to get something going with Ty Montgomery. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now we're going to get a stoppage. Appears to be an injured bear on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment, defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. So second and medium, second and five now. Following the penalty, Montgomery. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. The Packers on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and six. Now Rodgers. Looks for Nelson, and it's intercepted. Snags it for the pick, and they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. This is such a good read defensively. They know that this offense is going to try to get the ball to their playmaker in space. So what do they do? They crowd him and send bodies at him, and this one winds up being intercepted. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler, rather more complex, in order to try and fashion together a drive. counter with Howard and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down and a nice carry there of 15 yards sometimes it's hard to believe but there are times this game is about patience isn't it has had the game he expected but that run there that may get him going I was just gonna say maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right he struggled especially in that first half yeah and I know the great ones always think to themselves just hang in there I'm just one big carry away from busting this open that's a good start for him Let's go. now Howard and the second wave of tacklers is gonna get him as they stop him behind the line a loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Now Glennon. They'll set up the screen to Howard. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And give him nine yards on the second down screen play. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. The Bears on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and four. Glennon. The catch made by Miller. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Zach Miller, 47 yards. And the Bears get a bit closer. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. As this gets him back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. A drive there of just four plays. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Barth now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And yeah, he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Rodgers to Montgomery on the draw. He takes this for three to the 29. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. 
those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? On now is the Packers punter as he's on here to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Bears take over. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't score board watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They're going to look to throw over the middle, and it's incomplete. The Bears on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and ten. Back to throw. The screen pass here to Cohen. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. And now a first down following that long game. They'll set up a throw. And hold in by the tight end Miller. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation, let him sneak his way across, coming back underneath, put it in his hands, let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. So the offense has it first and 10. Hang on now. Three, 19. Ah. Looking to throw. And it's complete. The tight end, Deion Sims. A good pick up there of 22. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Hey, 
So here we go, first and ten now. They run with Howard. And he's able to get this inside the ten now to the nine. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And here comes play number six on this drive. Force a key turnover. And the red zone, though, had a chance to tie it and an opportunity missed. Now the Packers get set to go. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Fumble recovery, it's Rodgers. Caught, left side, Bennett. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Second down to the offense needing five yards. Rodgers going to give this one to Montgomery. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. Rodgers to throw on second down. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. 
Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. On now is the Packers punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. So now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Glennon gives to Howard on the draw, and he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. They shakes it off. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Clay Matthews able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Just a yard on the run there. That's going to bring us to a fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job got off the field, brought the punting situation. So they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys are getting along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. And take it right on the 30. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. They've got the lead, last time had to punt it though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Wow, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. A great move by Montgomery. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Second down following the run. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. 
Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. This offensive line starting to win up front. You win that battle in the trenches, you can kind of wear them down here late. So you bring in the second part to that equation, and that's the big running back, the big bruiser, who can get more than what's blocked and break a few extra tackles and gain yardage. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Into the red zone. It's Rodgers. That is caught at the seven. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Rodgers and this is caught and that could seal it it's a touchdown it would be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that well it's a two score game you're inside of two minutes I think you can breathe relatively easily now yeah you can but still you got to stay vigilant can't give up anything cheap and easy that could put you in some jeopardy Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. A drive that time of six plays. And the result, a Green Bay score. on now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Try and start this drive in the air. Gets it to Bellamy outright. And now off to the races down the right side. Touchdown! 
around Chicago. Josh Bellamy, 73 yards. And the Bears cut into that lead. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And it's good, so that will get them back within one score. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass, and that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. Rodgers handing to Montgomery, and he stopped immediately there. Now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And now the Bears going to signal for another timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. It's Montgomery, and he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
see if they stay on the ground for second down. On second down, Montgomery. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a third and three. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Packers on third down. Just a 20% success rate at two of ten. This time, it's third and three. On third down, they go Montgomery. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. It's a gain of seven, and that should just about do it. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Rodgers will take a knee here, and that should be all she wrote. And, Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.